guys, this is Svetlana from Comic Cosplay and welcome to part 2 of my Nagigante cosplay videos from Monster Hunter World. Last time I showed you how we made a bunch of costume pieces for the upper body and today I'm going to show you how we made the rest and this includes the belt, the scudfly cage, the dagger, the leg armor, the shoe armor and around 1 million spikes. So many parts, so many spikes. Anyway! Check out my cosplay making books if you want to get into cosplay as well and like do armor and props and stuff and spikes! Spikes are fun! Yay! Check out my books! Yay! And now let's begin! Yay! This time we are starting with the belt. It's so spiky! To get the basic shape I covered my dress form in duct tape and drew the pattern on. Then I traced this to 10mm EVA foam and adjusted it a bit. After cutting it out I got a really rough base to work with. Next I made a layer that was a little bit larger and glued it over the curved foam on my dress form. This way the belt actually stayed in shape. Following this I used my Dremel to clean up the edges properly. For the spikes I cut out a bunch of long triangles from 5mm EVA foam. I sanded them down at an angle and glued them together afterwards. Now a few lines on top and I attached all of them all around the belt. To get a more organic look I added a 2mm foam layer on top. Then surprise I attached even more spikes. And a second slightly thicker layer above it all. I cut a bit of the overlapping material away and used my Dremel as well as my wood burning tool to get the organic scaly texture for Nur Gigante. For the front plate of the belt I made another simple pattern. The base was out of 5mm foam and this piece got some texture as well. I simply attached it with contact cement and then grabbed some foam clay to make the skull. You can sculpt foam clay similar to regular clay, but once it has dried, it becomes soft and lightweight like foam. Here is the finished skull. After attaching it, I made some last little horns, glued them on and the belt was done. Yay! After this I primed the whole thing with three layers of Plasti Dip. Then Benny gave it a paint job with his airbrush. He first applied a few base colors to the skin and the spikes and then added some shadows. Next he sprayed on a thick coat of protective varnish. To make it look like real bone he brushed on some brown oil paints and then wiped them off again. Finally he added a few more details with acrylics and sealed the finished paint job with another layer of varnish. Looking good! The attachment I made with faux leather straps and velcro tape. I simply hot glued it to the inside of the belt, sealed the edges with more glue and attached the counterpart to the other side. I also made another million or so foam spikes. You can see this in more detail in my last Nerd Gigante video. To place them I sewed some velcro on a piece of fabric and glued the counterpart to the inside of the belt. Then after putting them together I carefully glued on spike after spike. All around spikes everywhere. A little bit of oil paint weathering and they already looked much more realistic. For the smaller belts on the sides I also used faux leather. Some buckram inside helped to give them enough strength and acrylic colors made them look more worn. Next I made some foam buckles and rivets and attached them with fabric glue. So far so good, the belt is done. Now for the scout flies cage thing. I copied my template on 2mm EVA foam, cut it out heated the material up and shaped it over an acrylic sphere. Then I got rid of the inner areas. I glued this piece onto translucent white foam, 
and attach both onto more foam. Following this, I built up the wall, which got some magnets on the inside and on the back to close the cage. The mesh on top was made out of white warbler strips. I shaped them over an acrylic sphere and used more warbler to connect them carefully to the base. Now I primed it all with flex bond, painted it and sealed it. For the light effects inside I used an Adafruit jammer and a NeoPixel ring with a green blinking animation. It's pretty simple, right? But the results look great on my belt. Next the carving dagger. Let's do this quickly. Benny drew me a blueprint which I traced on 5mm foam. I cut out two layers, sanded along deepening in the middle and placed the metal rod inside. This was just to make the dagger less wobbly. Now I marked the area for the sharp edge and drummed everything into shape. I used foam clay for the organic looking element at the top and 2mm foam for the leather grip. This looked good enough. Afterwards I covered it all in Plasti Dip and Benny gave it a simple paint job. Now only some missing details and my carving dagger was done. To attach it I made a simple holster out of old leather and used velcro and a few bolts to close it. Dagger on the back, check. Onto the mighty leg armor. I made duct tape patterns for the thigh and traced it to 5mm foam. Again, I burned the texture, added some details and heat shaped it. Afterwards, I secured it with tape. For the knee part, I made a freehand paper dummy, which I converted into foam. I added a few additional elements and Benny engraved another emblem for the front. Next, I sculpted two horns out of foam clay and gave them some texture and details. I only had to attach these to the sides and add more spikes all around. So far, so good. Same procedure for the shin armor. This was the pattern and this the foam base. I glued all pieces together, added thick 10mm foam on top to keep the shape, sanded the edges and burned in the texture. Next, I closed the back with more foam and attached a crazy amount of foam spikes. Spikes! Spikes everywhere! Now patterns for the shoe armor. I mean, you can probably guess what I'm about to say, right? Foam pieces and glue and spikes and all that. Yada 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 yada. Well, and this was the complete leg armor and dog. Everything was still held up with duct tape at this point. The next step was, yes, priming with Plasti Dip. Every time I used Plasti Dip, by the way, I actually used the German brand Gummi Dip, which is cheaper and easier to apply. Now all the pieces became nice and shiny. Benny and I painted everything like on a conveyor belt. He gave them all a base color with an airbrush, then brighter spikes and some brownish spots. Afterwards, he added yellow markings and covered everything in a thick layer of spray varnish. Then, as usual, we did a wash with oil paints. Applying it all and dropping it off took quite some time though. And well, each scale got more shadows by hand as well. In total, we spent around two days just for priming and painting all the armor pieces. In the end, everything got a final coat of spray varnish. Oh, and I totally almost forgot about this dagger. I quickly made a base out of 5mm high density EVA foam, sanded it into shape, made a foam holster and sanded this thing as well. So far for the build. After priming and washing, this was the result. I attached it with a massive amount of hot glue to the leg armor. Not too bad, right? Well, and this was the final costume all put together. We've worked on this for several months and this is by far
far the biggest project we've done. Also the one with the most bikes. It's all lightweight EVA foam. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. So the whole costume is finally done and I cannot wait to show you the next video. Where we show you how we build a gigantic nerdy gun to decimation claws! I know it always looks super fast when we build these things in the videos, but it took us three months in total to finish the whole project. So don't get discouraged if your costumes take a little bit of time, it's the same for us. Especially when you have to make 1 million spikes. <laughs> so don't forget to like and subscribe the video, especially if you found it helpful. And let me know in the comments if you still have any questions. See you soon, bye bye! <sighs> <sighs>